Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to do the reveal transition effect. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let me fit this here and let's make this full screen. And so basically what I'm doing is this effect right here. Where you see a object from one scene is used as the transition point for the next scene. So we have this pole as it goes by and then it reveals into this. It's a really fun sort of effect and a transition to add to your film or piece or any of the editing really. It just adds a lot of motion and it adds a lot of you know sort of fun creativity to it. So let me jump out of this and let's get started on this tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and to file new and create myself a new sequence so we can get a new sort of place to work from. And then I'm going to drag in my original footage which is right here. I'm going to change the sequence settings to it and then let's zoom into it. Now you'll notice that the original footage is actually really slow. Um, if I play it back here you can see it's just really slow and with this effect you kind of want it to be moving really really fast. Uh, it looks just a lot better. So I'm going to go in here I'm just going to go into the speed and duration. I right clicked on that to get to this speed and duration and I don't know why it opened up on my right screen but here it is. I'm going to go and type in 400% here and now it moves at a fast enough pace that it just goes straight across. This will also save you a lot of time in keyframing, which we're gonna be doing in a second. So we're gonna to get to the scene right where it starts. So right here is where it starts. So I'm gonna go right to the point before it. I'm gonna go and click this button right here, which is create a four polygon mask. So I'm gonna click on it, go to effect controls, and I'm gonna create a four polygon. You can also do it with the free draw of Bezier, but I like to do it with the square because this one adds these little uh, dots on the side so you can curve like the lines and they get in the way when I'm trying to keyframe so I just I just go with the square for this. I'm gonna click on the square and then I'm going to invert it so that it's removing not adding and then what we're going to do is we need to zoom this out to 25 percent and then we're going to take the top left dot and we're gonna move it just off screen up here the bottom left dot move it to just right here move this one over here and these whoops undo that rotation and move this over here and then we're gonna move we're going to go over here we're going to make sure that we toggle the animation make sure you do this because I've done this entire effect before and I didn't do this so I'm sitting here and I'm keyframing 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 and all it's doing is moving it permanently so I had to go back and do the entire thing again so make sure that toggle math toggle the animation for the mask path is on click back on the first the little mask one here and you'll get the boxes back then we're gonna move one frame forward and then I'll, I just adjust the frame like so, one frame forward, and then this right here is basically called, I mean it's keyframing, um, rotoscoping is what it's called, you do it a lot in After Effects, and it's just a tedious process that you can't really avoid, it just sort of happens, um, because there's, After Effects actually has something that'll make this a lot quicker, it does it almost for you, but I'm trying to do this in Premiere Pro, and Premiere Pro does not have something like that or at least it's not very good. It has a, a motion tracker um, next to it. That's what these buttons are, but I'm gonna have to figure out how that works entirely because it, I've never gotten it to work correctly. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go really fast here. Um, if you go two keyframes at a time, it's going to adjust it for you. This is gonna lower the quality down because you're not gonna get exactness, but I don't wanna sit here all day and do this for you guys. Um, so yeah, let me just speed this up really quick and I'll get back to you on the other side. Alrighty, so now you see that we have the entire area is now a black box, which is what we wanted to do. So now if we play this back, you'll notice that the mask goes with the pole. And you see it is a little bit sloppy there because I went quicker. But like I said, just spend the time to actually make the mask correct and it'll look perfectly fine like my first one did. So we have this here, we got this black box, and basically what it's doing is now it is creating a, an empty space beneath it. So I can take this and drag this up like so, and now you'll see that nothing has changed, so we're going to go in here, we're going to grab our piece of footage, and what we want to do is we want to put it beneath this footage. This way, what it's doing is it's revealing the bottom footage, and then just like that, you have the beautiful reveal shot. That's really all you need to do. It just kind of comes down to the masking, and you see it gets a little bit sloppy in here, like right there, down there, where it has a little opening in there. So like I said, if I didn't do two frames at a time, it probably would have came out a lot better, and maybe even add some more points to kind of get it you know, really exact. Um, feathering, I might actually reduce the feather here because it might reduce some of the draw in there. 
and maybe even warp stabilizing the beginning shot so I don't have these steps that are like throwing off these straight lines here, as you can see like right there again. But like I said, this is the essence of the effect. All you have to do is make a mask path and then just animate that mask path and suddenly you can get this really neat thing. And you can do it with anything. You can do it with a car if you wanted to be a little bit more complex, but you could do it with that. That is the effect. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw those in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, throw those in the comments below as well. I'd love to answer your guys' questions and to create tutorials on some things that you guys want to know. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on the Adobe related products, kind of focusing on Premiere Pro and After Effects, but I branch into other things as well. Thanks everyone for joining me, and until next time, see ya.